The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, here's the latest update now on Tropical Depression 14. We uh, still have those two systems out there uh, from yesterday. Uh, the one farther east has intensified now Tropical Storm Laura. Uh, Tropical Depression 14 is just off the coast of Honduras, uh, still poorly organized, uh, but likely to become Tropical Storm Marco uh, before long. TD-14 will be the primary threat to Texas, and we will focus on that. Uh, it is forecast now to become a hurricane uh, as it passes over the warm Gulf waters. Uh, may actually weaken slightly before landfall back to a tropical storm. That's what the Hurricane Center is forecasting now, uh, as it will encounter some increasing shear as it approaches landfall. TD-13, we won't talk much about that, but that uh, could have a big impact on Florida and some of the Northeast Gulf states. And uh, both storms will likely be on the Gulf of Mexico early next week, so that's very unusual to have two tropical cyclones at the same time in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a look at the latest track. Uh, right now, the uh, Hurricane Center, as of 10 a.m., is forecasting it to track uh, pretty steadily to the northwest. Right now it's moving west-northwest. Actually, now the, the movement has changed uh, just in the last six hours. Northwest at 14 miles uh, per hour. Still a tropical depression at 35 mile per hour as far as the winds go. And you can see that track, uh, you know, unfortunately has us right in the center uh, of the forecast cone. Uh, you know, really has Galveston Bay right in the center there. Uh, we still have many of our models that are a bit further to the right and even some to the left. So it does remain uncertain as far as the track and intensity of this. Um, but certainly uh, we are uh, sort of under the gun here, right in the, in the heart of that forecast cone. We could have a direct hit uh, or we, you know, we could have uh, a near miss to the right. But uh, we certainly are in play. The wind probabilities show much of the same thing. Uh, the, the maximum tropical storm wind speed probabilities, you can see the axis of the maximum, again, following that center line of the cone. Uh, so, you know, kind of right into the, uh, into the upper Texas coast there, uh, mid to upper Texas coast, over into Louisiana. Uh, this is actually a slight change from the forecast six hours ago, which was biased a little bit more to the east. Um, and it, it may well change some more uh, as we go forward, but uh, you can see the threat is certainly there for tropical storm force winds uh, in that uh, 30 to 40 percent range now for much of the uh, mid to upper Texas coast. The probability of 58 mile per hour sustained winds Again, with that stronger system, uh, we're starting to see some values here. And again, the access of highest numbers is, again, right into, into our area, uh, you know, which includes uh, Galveston all the way down to Matagorda Bay. Um, and so, um, you know, with a stronger storm, we could see uh, those higher uh, winds. Right now, the, the chance of that is 10 to 20% at any uh, one location uh, for much of that upper Texas coast area. How about the timing? This has slowed slightly uh, from yesterday. Now it's looking like the most likely time of arrival of tropical storm force winds would be Tuesday morning. You can see the 8 a.m. arc there uh, along the Texas coast. And, uh, and again, this could change again. There were quite a few questions yesterday about interactions between the two storms. Uh, if we do get an interaction, it's possible that the other uh, hurricane, if it's close enough, could actually slow this one down. But uh, it's also possible they'll, they'll remain far enough apart um, that uh, there won't be any effect. And this this timing sort of implies 
uh, kind of a steady movement to the northwest. So it is time to start talking about storm surge inundation. Uh, we did uh, talk to the Hurricane Center stored storm surge unit uh, this morning, and their feeling is uh, it'd be best to show sort of a, a maximum uh, surge for a, a high-end tropical storm. So uh, th this is a storm surge model called SLOSH, for those of y'all that aren't familiar. And what you can do is input a storm category, and it kind of gives you a worst-case scenario uh, for a direct hit by that storm. So it's a little bit hard to see, and uh, but you can see some light blues there and even some yellows. Uh, and there's a there's a scale at the bottom. So certainly Bolivar Peninsula, uh, Galveston Island, Bayside, and then some of the uh, uh, low lying areas around the bay, you know, including Chambers County, uh, Trinity Bay. Uh, those are all all the all the lowest low, uh, lowest of the low lying areas. Even San Leon uh, could see some inundation if we do get a direct hit from a strong tropical storm. Now, emergency managers, uh, of course, like to think about well, what could be what? What's a more uh, worst case scenario? If, if this were a Category One, uh, you can create a similar map, and, and I'll show you this just a bit later. Uh, how about the rainfall? Uh, again, this is really subject to change. Uh, this is the latest forecast from the Weather Prediction Center, uh, and you can see those uh, sort of three to five inch amounts right along the coast. Uh, extending uh, from Galveston Island on east, uh, covering much of the Gulf Coast. Remember, this includes the effect of both storms. Uh, so a lot of rainfall in the coastal areas. Uh, this could shift one way or the other, um, uh, but you know this could have an impact again, mainly on the coastal areas. Breaking that rainfall down uh, day by day, uh, you can see the heavier rains really don't come in really until that Monday, Tuesday time frame. Uh, you know, maybe more uh, Tuesday, honestly, with a slower movement uh, Monday night and Tuesday. Let's let's uh, put it that way. And then as far as uh, marine impacts, you know, you're going to see uh, locally higher seas near and ahead of these tropical systems. Uh, we'll likely see swell uh, arriving in the coastal areas and some high surf uh, probably late Monday. And, uh, you know, some much higher seas in the nearshore waters. You can see some 15 to 20 foot values kind of following the track of the storm and, and just to the right of the track. So, again, that is going to depend also on the track of the storm. Uh, that Tuesday evening map, you can see the impacts from both storms. Uh, both in the Gulf Tuesday evening. And of course, increased surf, rip current risk, uh, those are all factors that may really start coming into play late Monday. So just to sum up, uh, tropical depression, still relatively weak, is uh, expected to organize, intensify into a strong tropical storm, uh, possibly a hurricane for a while at least, as it after it leaves the Yucatan, and tracks northwest across the Gulf uh, toward the upper Texas coast or perhaps the Louisiana coast. The uh, arrival of tropical storm force winds looks to be uh, early Tuesday at the coast, Tuesday morning, that's the most likely time. Some weakening of the system is possible right before landfall as the storm encounters increasing wind shear. Impacts uh, will are still uncertain, but we do have that possibility of damaging winds, storm surge, flooding, and flooding from heavy rains, uh, high surf, uh, really especially for the coastal areas, all these impacts. Still too early to be really specific, but uh, as I mentioned, Hurricane Center recommends using a worst case tropical storm uh, as an inundation guideline. Uh, HERVAC is a great tool. Uh, I, if you don't have an account, I'll, I'll show you how to get one. Uh, you can kind of investigate how bad the surge flooding could be for different categories of storms. And then the high season swell could come in as early as Monday night uh, or even Monday afternoon. 